Well, it's another day and the sun's been out, uh, been and gone by the looks of it. I've just uh, put a coat of white and a coat of red on there, so that's had three coats now, that's absolutely done. As you can see, I've put, gone in with a little bit of blacking in between, but I'll do that blacking properly. When the red and white paints are nicely dry, I can mask them up and then really black it. I just wanted to get a bit on for now. So today I'm doing the third coat on the hull, third and final coat, but only the second coat on the sort of underneath of the stern, so I'll need tomorrow. Uh, to complete that but otherwise it's going great I can't believe the weather it's warm it's dry it's positively balmy so the stuff's going on a treat and uh, well let's crack on this is the trickiest bit hard on the arms it is after a few days of it. I press on. With limited daylight and my usual slow start to the day, I have to make hay while it's not raining. It's a difficult angle to work at, but I'm still being as thorough as I can. It's amazing how detailed you can be with one of these if you can be bothered actually but any little bits I don't get I've always got that little brush to come back round with so no problem there. And here I am with my detailing brush. Yes, it's another almost impossible to open can. But I'm getting the hang of them now. As usual, a good stir. This is the dregs from the previous tin. By now, I really get the sense that the boat has a good layer of protection added to it.
With a few days still in hand, I can practically smell victory. And that's it, three coats fully completed and in the best of weather as well, so that makes me very happy. I may or may not go round uh, with a sort of couple of rollers full at the waterline if I can till, still tell where it is, of course, uh, maybe tomorrow. I've got one more coat to do on the stern and the weed hatch still needs a bit of fiddling about with. And other than that, uh, I'm looking good. It'll get plenty of days to dry before I go back in the water and apparently that's really important so I'm happy about that as well. Next thing I've got to do is take off the masking tape and I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that the uh, bitumen hasn't bled underneath it too much otherwise that's going to be a bit of a problem but I'm going to do that now while the, uh, while the top coat bitumen is still a bit wet that's the best time so let's have a look see what happens. Chris. Well, you've certainly seen me peel back plenty of masking tape lately. And fortunately, the line is clean. That'll be thanks to rubbing down the tape edge carefully. Well, I'm starting to lose the light now, so I'm just cleaning up the tools and putting everything away for the day. I'm very pleased with how today went. I've got everything done that I wanted to, and more besides. I've also managed to uh, give a coat of blacking to the base of the inside of the gas lockers. Uh, if you remember, I red oxide did them a few months ago, and I'm quite happy with that. But the base where, obviously, the gas bottles get chucked in and out of, uh, you know, needs something a bit sort of extra tough on there so a couple of coats of blacking on that that'll keep that all nice and uh, dry and free from getting sort of uh, bashed around too much so that's great and uh, I've still got a few little bits of finishing off to do obviously but I've got several days in hand I mean obviously this has got to be done I couldn't uh, do the blacking right up to the paint until I took the masking tape off that the paint had had on it for that so I've got to then wait till the paint's dry and then sort of masking tape uh, on the paint side so I can black up to that so you know, a few little bits of fiddling around to do um, but generally I've been very very lucky with the weather it's been like a summer's day almost today where you wouldn't know it now it's clouded over but uh, yeah very pleased so far there you go See you next time.